Uh, mines may have had their day, and they may not be as effective as predators were just... One other uh, big question. When you're talking about predators, does a predator have to be mobile to be chasing the creature it's eating, or are you just talking about anything that's eating another creature? Like, is a coral... Uh, yeah, okay, a coral, that's uh, a very good question, because in, uh, there are cases where the predator doesn't have to be mobile, uh, except from parts of the predators have to be mobile. Uh, Anemones and corals, like you say, sometimes we call micro predators because they can use their tentacles to grab on, seize prey, pull it down into their gullet, and then uh, uh, ingest it. So, but filter in, feeders like uh, brachiopods. I wouldn't call filter feeders really predators in the same way, but, but since, since uh, corals can take in whole fish sometimes or anemones, then I would. Uh, when you're down to the small scale, I mean, maybe you, you, maybe it's a quibble because I was calling the conodont animals kind of micro predators, but uh, I think they're active swimmers and they, they clearly had tooth-like structures, so it seems like they were doing something that we would call predation. Whereas filter feeders are just just taking whatever they filter out of the water, and a lot of it's algae anyway, and you wouldn't call that pred predation if it's plant material. Yeah. One of the responses to uh, predators that you didn't mention was. Uh, Vision, or at least light yeah. sensation. That's right. Uh, that, that developed about very early too. Also developed quite early. Remember the pictures of the uh, anomalous Paris? Have uh, they had quite well developed uh, <coughs> eyes? These things, some of them on stalks, and a lot of the arthropods at that time do. So you're absolutely right. That's another line of argument that uh, predation was becoming important in the early Paleozoic. So you got a lot of things synchronously developing eyes. I don't believe there's anything prior to that that has anything you'd call an eye. Maybe a little light-sensitive spots on some things, but uh, eyes as such, I think, come along with, with the rise of this escalation. And, you know, by, by Devonian, these trilobites had wonderful eyes and clear vision, apparently, some of them with uh, non-distorting lenses and everything, so it, uh, it certainly suggests that they were uh, looking at the world clearly, and perhaps because they had to bend uh, predator or watch out. Yes? Is there anything in the fossil record that allows us to see the sophistication of the digestive systems of some of these? Mm, generally I not. I mean, one, one can start to, uh, to answer that by saying we know about when animals started to have guts because we see the coprolites. Coprolites tell us that uh, they had a through-flowing gut with a mouth at one and an anus at the other. Um, perhaps from other coprolite evidence, the, the way in which the particles are broken down and corroded, there are certain types of digestive acids that leave distinctive pitting on skeletal remains that come through in the in the feces and the coprolites, and so you could use that as, as an indicator of perhaps of digestive acids. Otherwise, uh, there are stomach contents known from some fossils, even in the Cleveland Shale, which show how big and what type of predator prey they took in. Sometimes, just like modern, uh, they, they show a very distinct orientation with, with fish, at least, that they're head forward stomach. So it's a tough, like all these things, tough to get at with fossils, but if you're clever and keep your eyes out, there, there can be clues to, to some of this stuff. But it's very rare that you'd actually see the soft digestive parts preserved. So you have to go with indirect stuff. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Follow-up question uh, about the eye, uh, the, the product eyes, and you were saying mm -hmm. you know, all these different things were developed in eyes. Yes. Around the same time. Mm -hmm. they somehow come from Ancestry uh, or mm -hmm. eyes Million dollar question in a way. We would have always, so the knee jerk reaction said absolutely not. They, they evolved completely independently. Um, certainly, the things that the components of a cephalopod's eye are made from different initial tissues than a vertebrate's eye, even though, as you know, a an octopus eye is pretty sophisticated, has a lot of common features with, with a, a, a mammal eye, even. But well, we would have said absolutely that these are coming from totally different materials. However, in recent years, there's been the expansion of the study of regulatory genes called Hox genes. And it looks like there are certain types of master genes in organisms that are set up to turn on or turn off different uh, body uh, parts or uh, their development in a way. And under that hypothesis, there may actually be some very what we call deep homology of eyes, uh, where meaning that there's some master control that actually comes through and was allowing, although different building materials, but to put together eyes some, somehow in similar ways. So that's why I say it's a million dollar question. It's a very interesting one. But in terms of the more immediate sense, no, they're, they're evolved out of different materials, different times, and 
not not all exactly synchronicity and, and so on. Cal uh, trilobites used a calcite lens, uh, whereas others use an organic lens. And so on. But a, a great great question with a kind of ambiguous answer, I realize. But it, I mean, you do understand what I'm getting at. Yeah. Uh, you've had a question. I understand at the. During the Cambrian explosion, when all the shells became hard, mm -hmm. that was a big jump, and all of a sudden the predators. Yeah, I mean, that may be even a more it. important one than this middle Paleozoic thing that I'm emphasizing in my talk. But yeah, that that right. Go ahead. But that's right. That that was a big thing. But <laughs> you said you you understood that. But, well, well, but, just I just I just wanted a little more feedback. On okay, because oh, sure. it was a well, neat, it was a neat. You know, yeah. one of the largest innovators of predators. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Even though there weren't nearly as many predators perhaps around at that time, but there were a lot of arthropods that, like Sydney, a thing that uh, Walcott named, and Anomalocaris, quite a diverse group. It wasn't just one genus, a number of these things. They were putting pressure on, on organisms and probably others that we don't see. On the whole, Bo, imagine a lot of the predators are going to have some hard parts that will get preserved because they need to have hard parts to, to bite and so on. And so uh, we're going to be a little more apt to see them around. But absolutely, I think they were putting a lot of pressure on little guys like uh, Hallucigenia and these other swimmers and such uh, that were uh, perhaps behind the rise of skeletons at that time. The skeletons aren't all made of the same materials either. Some are phosphate, some are calcite, some are agonite. But different organisms were doing what they could <laughs> using the genetic constraints that they had to build some kind of uh, uh, skeletons that were protective, more or less synchronously, I mean, within a few million years. So it's a good, good point to be made, too. Yes? With modern starfish, do they do the same thing with the skeletons that they do with the other skeletons? Yes, it's from the modern ones that we get the notion that they do. Yeah, because you, I would say you can't really quite see that happening in fossils, but you can see the starfish crouched in the same sorts of positions over the clams as far back as Ordovician. And um, of course, the stomachs are not preserved, but there are cases where uh, snails and other things have been found up inside the, the, the shells, up inside the starfish. So there's uh, s some strong suggestion that they could do it as far, far back as 450 or 70, 470 million years ago. But it's the modern ones where we see the actual stomach eversion. And spines would help against that too, to some degree. I can see, I can see, I'm sort of a spine advocate. I think that they, they do help, but other people might argue that they have other functions. I think that's that's quite likely too. Yeah. Anything else? Well, thanks very much for your patience and your questions.